Today is uh, Thursday, September 26, 2019, and we are continuing our discussion of I am the door. I'm reading out of Matthew 10, 1 through 10, where it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the, th the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will save. He'll be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to kill and to steal and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. <clears throat> First, so that they, those who heard this and us, will know that the door, he's declaring this to the audience for the reason that we will not consider the door is ceremony, will not consider the door as doctrine, will not consider the door as profession or achievement. See, why would Jesus say this to anyone except for those reasons? He's explaining to the Pharisees and the crowd that's gathered. I want you to know it's not being a Pharisee, it's not being a, Sad a Sadducee, it's not being of some denomination or independent church or quote, a non-denominational church that gets you into the kingdom. I'm the only door. You want to be saved? You got to come through me. I'm the only gate for you to be saved, for you to be free, for you to have satisfaction. The only way is Jesus, Yahweh, the I am God. That's why Jesus is saying this to us. I want you to know this. It's not about all these things that seem to be so important to so many people today. He is stating this so that we will know whatever voice we hear or anxiety we feel, there's only one gate. There are not 5,000. There are not 500. There are not 50. And there are not five. There's but only one. Any other voice claiming to be the gate of the door is a thief or a robber. Now, I'm going to say some things that could be very offensive here, and I want you to listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. The robber and the thief come but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The thief comes over the wall. Only the shepherd comes by the gate. Way too many times churches and denominations use this text, or pastors use this text, or a prophet does, or some evangelist, when someone questions their authority or the authority of the leader in their church or denomination. No church or denomination on this planet is eternal. I want to say that again. No church or denomination on this planet is eternal. It's all temporary. And no church, no pastor, no theologian, no denomination has a corner on doctrine. It's the truth. The word of God is the final authority on doctrine. Not my interpretation, not your interpretation, not some church's interpretation, not some denomination's interpretation. And by the way, after it's repeated over and over again, we're pretty much sure we're the only one that has it right. That's a little bit hilarious, isn't it? Way too many churches and denominations are attempting to hold on to their own instead of yielding to kingdom authority. It's about relationship with the eternal God. And I, I think, wow, there's some, there's some really great advice worth hearing out of the Word of God. When Gamaliel, in, in, in Acts chapter 5, he's, he said something that I think we need to hear today. When, when we pretend to think we're defending our honor, our authority, or our doctrine, or our church, or our denomination. And I said the word pretend because we really aren't defending that. We're defending our ego in most cases. And... And our, our pride has been hurt. And so we're going to, we're really getting up there strong. He said, keep away from these men 
let them alone. For this, if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you can overthrow it, lest you be found to fight against God. Acts 5, 38, 39. There is no question when the issue is over something clearly spelled out in the word of God. You shall not do this. You shall do this. But when it's something derived from practice or heralded as uh, for years in a certain church or in a certain denomination, that this is the way it, it is, when that's just really it's a tradition established by men, but it has really no solid root in Scripture, then when it's debatable in the least and not, it's not worthy of shaming or shunning one another because we are held we're holding to some doctrine or some point of view so strongly. Jesus said, here it is. I am the door. I am the gate. I am. I'm the final authority in my invisible church. Too much is placed upon men who hold offices. Too much is placed upon them. The book, the Bible, the author of it, that's where the authority is. And too many of us, too many of us who claim to follow Jesus lack the compassion and grace for others who disagree and we feel threatened by them. We're so insecure about so many issues. Listen, Jesus is the only door. Come to the door and hide yourself in him. Oh, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for those times we, we were so adamant about something that wasn't clearly spelled out and help us, God, help us to have compassion and, and be sensitive and, and just as simply come to clarity about understanding that you are the, are the only one who sees everything and we see through a glass darkly. But someday, someday, Lord, in anticipation, we're going to see you face to face and be known be known even for who you really are and who you really are. And so I praise you today. Help us to quiet down, calm down, and be sensitive to those around us. And help us, Lord God, to be clear about your word when it says do this or don't do this. I praise you. Thank you for guidance today. Thank you for clarity today. And thank you that you're the one. We come to you. You're the only door. Thank you for that. Amen. Hey, have a blessed day.